Catherine recently completed um, another book, Kingship and Masculinity in Late Medieval England. Um, this book looks specifically at the gender identity of Henry VI, but also uh, in comparison, I suppose, to his father, Henry V. Mm -hmm. um, how would you sum up Henry VI's uh, identity? Because the, the, the poor man was much maligned at the time, and it has been ever since, but the, there are evidence that perhaps he was far stronger than that. Yes, he, traditionally he's been seen as a very weak king, as very easily led by other people, and particularly by his wife, Margaret of Anjou, who is infamously domineering. But what I'm trying to suggest in the book is that that wasn't inevitable. It's often felt that he was just naturally not very manly, and that right from his birth up until his death, when he was murdered, that he, he never had the potential to be a good king, and he was always doomed to fail at being a king. But I think if you look at the evidence in context, if you look at events as they unfolded, you get quite a different picture of his kingship. And we know that he became ill, he had a mental breakdown in 1453, but if you look at the years just prior to that, he's actually starting to become quite an effective king. There's a rebellion against his rule in 1450, but that's dealt with, and he starts to, he starts to rule effectively and strongly. And if he hadn't had a breakdown in 1453, I think perhaps he might have come down to us as a, as a different king, perhaps as a stronger and a more effective king. In terms of gender identity, um, historians tend to look at uh, women, but, but men are, are, are sort of ignored a little bit, mm. as in uh, a king is a king, so thus he will do this uh, and he'll do that and he'll do the other. But that, that isn't really the case, is it? No, it's not. We're, we're used to the idea, I think, in the, in the modern world that gender is a partly a product of biology, but it's also a product of our upbringing, the way that we're raised and educated and the kinds of experiences that we have. And that's something that we need to apply to men in the past as well. So going back to Henry V and Henry VI, it doesn't really make sense to just say Henry V was manly and Henry VI wasn't manly. We, we need to look at how that actually worked in practice. And with Henry V, he had a lot of opportunity when he was a teenager to essentially practice being a warrior because he had to go and fight in Wales where there was a lot of rebellion. And that helped to turn him into this incredibly strong military leader, the man that famously conquers Normandy, wins the Battle of Agincourt and so on. Whereas his son, Henry VI, comes to the throne at the age of nine months, and it's a very, very secure throne. And for decades, he never has to fight. There's, 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 there's no reason for him to. And I think that, that that's a really important fact that people have overlooked, really, that Henry V has to go into battle and his son doesn't. And I think it's therefore no coincidence that one of them ends up being very manly and very strong and, and the other one doesn't because he doesn't, he doesn't need to be. He doesn't need to prove those sorts of qualities in the same way. Mm. Did he have other qualities then? Would you say? Yes, he well famously Henry the Sixth is usually <coughs> regarded as, as very pious because after he died, after he was murdered, he was venerated as a saint. People almost immediately thought that he was working miracles for them. And I think, I think that it probably is true to say that there, there is a level of piety in his conduct, particularly perhaps in his latter years when he is, well, he's suffering from a, a kind of mental illness and perhaps religion became more important to him then. But again, that contributes to this idea of him being rather unmanly because he's more interested in praying. And some of his contemporaries said that he would have been a better monk than a king. Um, so, so those are those are important qualities in a king, but ones that can rather compromise their masculinity, I suppose. In that period, um, was it uh, seen as um, manly, uh, and perhaps why Henry VI failed to go into battle, to to be warlike, um, and thus his father was and he wasn't. He, I mean, was he typecast a little bit uh, in terms of like, oh, well, he didn't go to war, so he, he just wasn't manly. Is, is, is it as simple as that? To some extent it is, because in being a warrior, you display lots of very admirable male qualities of strength of body, but also leadership um, and personality and charisma. And... When Henry VI was, a, was growing up as a, as a teenager, many different books were written about the exploits of his father, and these were obviously intended to try and teach Henry VI to be like his father. But I think some, some people might argue that that almost had the, the reverse effect, and I suggest in, in a certain 
place in my book that perhaps he almost rejects this and perhaps he wants to try and adopt a, a different kind of kingship instead. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure perhaps some of us can relate to that idea that if you're told over and over again that you must be like your parent, then perhaps the natural reaction is to want to try and find a different model to follow. But unfortunately for Henry VI, at the time, people didn't want him to have that freedom, really. Mm. If he had just been a warrior king, they would have been much more comfortable. But unfortunately, he, just, he wasn't able to be. So strong in another way, would you say? Yeah, I, th I think so. Again, I think that perhaps there is some evidence to suggest that, there, that he does show moments of strength, in fact. And for example, uh, people who rebelled against him in 1450, he then passed judgment over them, um, had them executed. He had this, contemporary say, a harvest of heads was sent back to London to go on London Bridge. So he does show moments of strength. And again, as I say, if, if he hadn't become ill, then perhaps we would have seen him leading troops into battle eventually. But of course, We'll never know because he was ill and uh, and then he was never able to take really a serious part in government again. And, and in contrast to his father, who um, perhaps uh, passed on just at the right time. Yeah. Is there evidence of that? Absolutely, yes. Because we're all very used to the, the Shakespearean version of Henry V, which, which is based on his medieval reputation and, again, the great hero of Agincourt and the conqueror of Normandy and so on. But actually, he, he died quite suddenly of dysentery. And in the year or so before he died, the English people were starting to be a bit impatient um, with the amount of money that they were having to pay for his French campaigns. So you're right, in a way, it's, it's a bit like, uh, I suppose, a James Dean figure. If, if you will, he dies at the height of his power um, and his achievements. And so again, we, we never know what might have happened if he had carried on being king. And again, it, it may be that, uh, that he, he may not have been able to maintain France, just as his son couldn't either. The University of Huddersfield, inspiring tomorrow's professionals.